Hey, this is Sean Haynes from Team Wayfinder, and today we'll be interviewing John Swayze, the voice of Lord Death from Soul Eater, Gendo Ikari from Evangelion, and from the mega popular series Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Von Hohenheim and Father. All right, um, let, let, let's get started. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Glad you all could uh, have me. All right, so our first question for today is, uh, what got you into voice acting? Well, um, I've, uh, I started out as a, uh, just a regular, uh, film actor doing commercials and some film work and then started doing, um, uh, commercials and, um, realized that there was a lot more money doing commercials and I didn't have to shave. So, um, I, I really got into it. And then, uh, back in 1995, I was, uh, or 96, excuse me, I was, um, I had the good fortune of being pretty well, uh, you know, I've been in the business for a while doing uh, the commercial thing and had a pretty good reputation and, and was doing quite well. And a, f a friend of mine um, named uh, Jason Lee uh, introduced me. He goes, hey, man, you ought to do this thing called anime. And I was like, what What the hell is anime? And um, he started to explain and I was like, yeah, OK, whatever. So I at first just saw it as an opportunity to do another job. You know, I didn't think really much of it because I didn't know anything about it. And even in 1996, even, you know, then it was still sort of, I'd say, maybe not in its infancy stage here in America, but certainly certainly its adolescent stage. And um, anyway, so I went over to this company called ADV Films and auditioned and uh, had arguably the worst audition I've ever had for anything, anytime, anywhere. And I thought, you know, I thought I was going to nail it. And I just, because I didn't understand what was going on or the whole ADR process. I just didn't get it. And um, so I went out to my car and I just thought, oh my gosh, that was the worst thing ever. And I, I turned around, I went back inside. I said, look, could I try this one more time? And they said, sure. And so I did. And I just kind of went nuts with the voices and the, the craziness of it all. And, and they were like, oh, wow. Yeah, that's much better. So. Um, I started working there in 1996 and, uh, you know, I've never looked back and have gotten the good fortune to play a lot of great roles. That's awesome. That, that sounds like a really great story. Um, uh, what is one of the, out of the many characters that you've voiced, what's one of the favorites that you've, you've had the pleasure of voicing? Um, you know, that's a, that's a tough one when you ask a voice actor, what's your favorite voice? Because they're all fun. Some of them certainly are, are a little more, uh, uh, challenging and, uh, push you to the, push you to the edge. Um, but, um, you know, Gendo's a favorite, um, because he's such a popular character and he's such a maniacal and twisted individual. Um, there's another uh, character by the name of Gates in Full Metal uh, Panic, um, and he's uh, really crazy, and that was a lot of fun to play. And he he sort of has a voice like this, and he's it's a little like uh, Soul Leader uh, Lord Death. Not quite as happy though. This guy, you know, chops up babies and eats them for breakfast. So oh jeez, um, I mean not literally, of course, but I'm just saying he's <laughs> that kind of weird dude. But uh, you know, um, they're all fun because I I. I don't really, uh, you know, I'm not like a, a Vic Mignogna or Chris Patton and and play um, the hero or the, the, the lead. You know, I usually get villains and uh, and bad guys and that kind of thing. So which is always a lot of fun to play. But it, it, it's I have a I guess I've just been blessed with a pretty good range. So I've been able to do a lot of different types of characters. So um you know, I, I've uh, Lord Death is certainly a favorite, and uh, uh, Salvador from the video game Borderlands Two was a favorite, and uh, but they're all fun. You know, they're all fun to do, and and uh, even if I'm just doing my normal voice, you know, because I don't get to do it that often, that's fun to do as well. So I I, I know that's kind of a, a a vanilla chicken answer, but it's really the truth. You know, I just worked on a show today that. Um, it's a brand new show and it wasn't a huge part, but I, uh, I got to play an older man, which I, I seem to do a lot of, but that's always fun too. So, you know, as long as I'm stretching myself and, and playing different characters and, uh, that sort of thing, it's, it, it, that's what I like the most, I guess, is about it. 
Yeah, well, that's cool. Uh, do you got any funny stories from inside the booth or? Funny stories inside the booth. Sure, man. I, um, there was a, uh, I was doing a show one time called, uh, Coyote Ragtime and, uh, I played a character by the name of Mr. And uh, he's sort of the lead bad guy, but it's one of those shows. Are you familiar with the show? No, I don't think I have. Okay, well, it's one of those shows where the, you know, there it's a band of outlaws, and the the bad guy is really the hero. I mean, you know, he's there are no good guys; it's all bad guys, and he's just the the nicest of the bad guys. <laughs> and um, anyway, we're doing this scene, and this director here in town in Houston was notorious for having actors do multiple takes and, and, you know, taking like three words from this take and marrying it to the back half of take eight, you know, and it was just, it was ridiculous. Um, but anyway, we were doing this thing where, uh, we were, the scene was an explosion and my character gets blown off of this scaffolding that he's on and then he lands. So it's a, it's an explosion. We do what's called a Foley where it's just like, Wah! and then he lands sort of a, Ugh! you know, so it's, that's it. It's the yell of the explosion and then you land sort of a recovery and it's not even on screen. I mean, there's smoke and there's ash and you no know, debris and all this. You can't even see the guy barely. And uh, yeah. we did it like 30 times because the director couldn't decide what he wanted. And I was just like, finally, like, dude, I don't know what you want. I cannot, I've done everything I know to do. And then some, I mean, I've even done, you know, and he asked the engineer and the engineer looked at him and just said, guys, uh, he goes, uh, he goes, you know, it's an off screen Foley. Just pick one. He's done like 30 of them. Of course, he used a lot more expletives that I won't uh, share with you here, but it was like, he was furious and then just stormed out of the room. All right. Uh, how, how does it feel when you go to cons and you, all these people are just, you know, like, oh, you're so great, you know, shaking your hand, telling you how awesome you've been in roles? How does how does that feel as an actor? Well, um, you know, I am pretty awesome. So uh, <laughs> it's it's pretty normal for me. My wife says I'm awesome every day and my kids say I'm awesome every day. And if you're buying any of this listening, then you're really not too bright. So, uh, no, it, it's a, it's an absolute treat and I'm humbled and, um, amazed, you know, because we go in and do this and it's, it's, it's a job, it's a fun job, but it's a job. I mean, it's what we do, you know? So we really don't think like, oh my gosh, this is my dream role. This is the role I was born to play. And, you know, I mean, we have a lot of fun with the characters and, and, uh, that kind of thing, but it's really cool to meet the fans because the fans are the ones that are really, especially with conventions. I mean, I think that they're the ones that are really driving this business right now. So um, it's, you know, if it weren't for the fans, we wouldn't be doing anything. So I, I just love going to conventions. I did a whole bunch of them last year and I've only done a handful this year, but I'm trying to do more because I think it's important to get out and meet as many fans as you can and, and you know, thank them for their support and, you know, all that and not, not to go out and get a pat on the back and say, you know, how great am I? It's not that it's really to go out and say, how great are you the fans for making this possible for me? I mean, yeah. they're the true heroes here, in my opinion. Um, well, uh, one more question. Uh, do you got any, uh, any pointers for, uh, you know, uh, up and coming voice actors, amateur voice actors who, you know, want to, uh, want to do what you do? Well, I mean, yeah, if you want to, I mean, we do, I, I do voice workshops here in Houston, and a lot of times people want to get into anime and all that. And, and one thing you have to understand is, in, I mean, if you want to do um, animation, then you need to be in Los Angeles or probably Vancouver. You know, um, a lot of anime comes out of Texas, but it's really just some anime. So there's, you know, Funimation up in Dallas, and there's, Sentai here and um, Seraphim Films here. Um, but, you know, you're not going to make a full time job of it. So, you know, for me, I mean, for instance, I diversify by doing I do a lot of commercials and I do industrial narrations and 
things like that. A lot of actors do books on tape or, you know, it's hard to just make a living as an anime voice actor for sure. It's hard enough just to make a living doing any kind of voice work, but to, to pigeonhole yourself into one genre is, is pretty much impossible to survive. So, you know, the first thing I would say though, is if you're really interested, no matter where you are, is take an acting class. Try to find a film acting class because that's going to help you with a script and how to dissect a script. Then the second thing is, is wherever you are, you've got to be where the work is. So you've either got to be in Houston, Dallas, or in Texas anyway, or you've got to be up in Vancouver or Los Angeles, or maybe somewhere on the East Coast, close to New York. Um, but you've got to be in a big city. If you're not in one of those places, you can still do voice work, but doing animation and stuff is probably not going to, you know, fall under your uh, scope of available jobs because it's just not done outside those regions. So I would just say you'd have to, you'd need to move. And I, you know, I've worked with actors that they come from little towns in Texas. And I'm like, look, man, if you want to do it, you got to move to Dallas. Um, you know, go up there and get a job waiting tables and take some acting classes and, you know, see if you can't get into working with Funimation. And then if you want to do that for a while, great. And then maybe move to Los Angeles. And, you know, the, the, the trickiest thing is guys, is that there are a lot of people that want to do this and a lot of people that are trying to do it. And it's just a very, very tough business to crack into. Um, and it takes a lot of persistence and a lot of tenacity and a lot of banging your head against the wall, you know, hoping that you can break through. So that's my advice. My advice really is don't don't do it. <laughs> um, uh, what was it like working uh, on like Full Metal Alchemist being Von Hohenheim and father? You know, Cause the characters have to talk to each other a bit sometimes. So. Uh, yeah, that was, I mean, that was a, that was a great role. I, I really enjoyed that. Mike uh, McFarland directed me in that up at Funimation. And uh, I remember getting the role and originally, uh, you know, of course I didn't play the father originally. It was Scott McNeil. Um, and they had an issue uh, with, it was like a work visa issue because he lives in Canada. Mm -hmm. And so they had me come in and try to not mimic or recreate, but, you know, do the voice sound a little like this, but don't try to be Scott McNeil, just be yourself. But, uh, so that was a, that a, that was a bit of a challenge, but, uh, Mike McFarlane was, is a really gifted director and, and he made it really easy to work with and, and try to find the character and, and find how I was going to do the character. The same thing happened with Gendo in, um, in, uh, Evangelion. And uh, Matt Greenfield was the director of that. And, and I had to take that role over for the original one as well. And uh, the original actor. And so, you know, Matt helped me with that. And, you know, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, and one of the things I like to do is listen to what the Japanese actor does and sort of recreate, uh, you know, if I'm going to mimic anyone, it's going to be what the Japanese guy does as best I can with, you know, in English, obviously, but yeah try to capture their emotional uh their emotional level because they're the ones that created the role so they've they're the closest to it you know if i can tap into what they're doing I'm, i hope i can give a good good performance yeah um do <clears throat> you got any final thoughts for our viewers or anything you know just um thank you again for all your support man i mean you know if if you guys weren't buying the anime and downloading and streaming and uh we wouldn't, we wouldn't be doing anything. We'd be sitting around like a bunch of ding dongs in a studio with nothing to do. So I just want to say thank you to all the fans and, and I appreciate it. And I'm very accessible. You can always friend me on Facebook and, uh, uh you know, give me a holler and I'll be glad to chat with you. I get fans, um, every now and then that'll text me or, email me and just want to chat or Facebook me and want to say hello. And I love that. You know, I can't always chat. I can't take up, you know, do it all day long, but, um, they are always seem to be understanding and, and forgiving and, you know, like, Oh, you're with your family. Okay. Well, I just wanted to say hi. And I'm like, you know, that's just, that's so cool. That's really nice. And I'm, 
I'm thrilled, privileged, and honored to be a part of that. And I hope that uh, I get to keep doing it for a long, long time. And if you want to meet me in person, just uh, find a convention near you and shoot them an email and ask if they can bring in John Swayze. Well, all right. Well, thank you for being on the show. It was a pleasure having you.